Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom again. And today, we're going to be doing the Hopeful Meter from every NHL team. Actually, comes from The Athletic, uh, which I have a subscription to. And uh, I was wondering what I was going to do for my next video. And then I read this, and I was like, wow, I'm going to put my spin on this. So what they did is they um, had, they sent it out to all the people in the land there in the athletic, and they asked a whole bunch of questions and had a pot. If they were positive or negative, they put it down as positive or negative, pessimistic or optimistic. And then they gave a percentage of how many were optimistic and how many were pessimistic. And uh, we're going to look at some of the things that the fans said for each team. And I'll put my little spin on each one. Tell me down on the bottom if you agree with the fans that actually voted in this. Or if you think a little differently. Some of them I agree with. Some of them I don't agree with. Sometimes both are correct, actually. It's a pretty cool little thing. Uh, me and Marvin the Martian. <laughs> Marvin. If you know who Marvin is, go tell me in the bottom. Loves me some Marvin the Martian. Are going to head over there first. The NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Check it out. Uh, I'll be starting again on Monday. And uh, that's from 3 o'clock Eastern until when I feel like it o'clock. Usually around 5 Eastern, somewhere around there. Sometimes 6, sometimes 7 though. I like to push the envelope sometimes. And the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the four major sports and teams within those four major, sport, major sport, sports, you will love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Just happens to be my boss. Okay. Let's head over. The Buffalo Sabres are the first one, of course. Uh, and the Optimist, some of these are like, there's actually an Optimist. Uh, unlike the tank battle of 14-15 when Tim Murray was forced to trade a couple dozen goalies because they proved capable of making saves, no concerns at all that the tandem of the 53-year-old Craig Anderson and former bar backup Martin Jones, Aaron Dell, will get in the way of, of the race to the bottom of the season. Yes, back, former backup to Martin Jones. That's not uh, something you really want to be known for. Um, that was the positive. That was the optimistic. Uh, they got a 15.2 on the optimistic meter. There was 15.2% fans actually had optimistic things to say. That doesn't sound like one of them. Pessimistic Scott, please send help. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm not I'm actually a little more optimistic than most fans will be this year. Um the most fans of Buffalo, although I can completely understand why they're pessimistic. My gosh. I mean, if you ever got your hopes up at all with the Buffalo Sabres, you've felt them crushed over and over and over again. So not surprised at all. But I really like Granado as a coach. And um Besides Jeff Skinner being on this lineup, I think Middlestat, Tage Thompson are going to take big steps up this year. You have Victor Olofsson. But it's not great. I just have a feeling the energy on this team and Granado coaching, is this team's going to be better than people think, but still like more competitive than people think. And I think they're going in a better direction uh, now with uh, a different, like forget about the past, look towards the future, get the right attitudes in there, have a great coach that can bring that attitude. And I think they have that. So there are some things here that make me go, maybe they are going the right direction. But Craig Anderson and Tukarski, 
that's going to be the real issue. I agree with the uh, the writer there that was optimistic, apparently. Um, next, we'll go to the Calgary Flames, 31st. Now, you know what? This actually surprised me because I find... I found that find that Calgary Flames fans are usually very overly optimistic for their team. I was really surprised to see this kind of pessimism. Uh, hoping some of the young guys can continue to develop and maybe Calgary is able to bring in a certain superstar who is on the block. Yes, Jack Eichel is rumored to go to Calgary. And uh, that would make some sense. I'll get into that in another thing sometime. But... Uh, can't wait to finish between 7th and 12th in the West draft between 9th and 17th and do it all again next year. That is the problem. Not bad enough. Not good enough. I have to agree. I'm on the pessimistic side for the Calgary Flames. They're just forever, the way they build their roster, going to be not bad enough and not good enough. And it's really sad to watch. But... I, Usually Calgary fans just think, oh, we won the Lucic trade and, uh, you know, all of the, you know, Monaghan this year and Goudreau, we got Goudreau and, and it's just, they, but this year, maybe it finally, the wheels fell off of the optimism, I guess. Uh, Nashville Predators. Optimism, a fresh young core, despite appearances. I feel we'll put a good on a good show. The old guard may be waddling out the door, but what's left is a transitional period of hope. That's about all you got. I agree. That's about as optimistic as I could see. I mean, 19% of the people in Nashville were optimistic. Uh, bad, saddled with bad contract, two of the best players need new contracts, and if they get them, it'll probably be more than they're worth. It's just a downhill which they'd really blown it up last year. And I agree. I think they need to blow it up. Just quickly look at Nashville here. Oh, that's Calgary. Uh, if you look at Nashville, you've got just those two horrible contracts. I don't know how the general manager still has a job now. Poil after those two contracts and that trade of Jones to get Ryan Johnson, Ryan Johansson, uh, just not much pretty in this lineup. It, 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 they need to rebuild. And I think they kind of are. Making the trade to get Cody Glass and Myers, 24-year-old uh, uh, Cody Glass, a former top six, I believe, in the draft, uh, wasn't was struggling in uh, Vegas. I think they're showing signs here that they're going to be moving on from veterans and rebuilding and for a Nashville fan, that's not much to look up to because they never came close. Really one year maybe, but really haven't even come close to a cup. So next, Arizona. Now that surprised me that Arizona was 29, wasn't like the bottom. Maybe Buffalo and then Arizona, but no, there is some optimism. Optimistic in the long term. And I think that's where you can find optimism with uh, co the Coyotes. Armstrong has really brought in um, a lot of draft picks. There's going to be a lot of draft picks. The roster as it is right now, horrible. But he managed to get a crap load of draft picks for this team. This year, it's going to have three first. Montreal's first could be, I, I have a feeling they could do really poor this year. Although it's top 10 protected, I believe. Something like that. It was a, it was a weird thing. But, um, and Colorado's in their own. And then look at five seconds. That's how you do it. So, I mean, that is some room for optimism that you have a general manager that knows how to rebuild. Maybe unlike one we just talked about, in a way, I could almost say that I may be more optimistic about Arizona than I am in Nashville. The, the light has gone out of my life. Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah, that's some pessimism. But Arizona 
deserves to be pessimistic. They haven't gone anywhere in their whole existence. And now they're going to go in a complete rebuild. Oh, it's tough, man. The arena deals and ah, I feel for you. Arizona is going to make it though, man. I know they are. They're going to make it. We need them in the league. We love you, man. We need Arizona in the league to expand this uh, and the NHL. No more Martin Jones, San Jose Sharks. Ah, uh-huh. that's that's the that was like so. Is that obviously that's not the most optimistic thing they could find, but it was it was probably the funniest thing. Our best player may or may not have bet against his own team. No, that's not true. I don't. Well, they didn't prove it. There's no way he can play here, but he's pretty much untradeable. Yeah. Our two way, our two highest paid blue blue liners are way past our primes, but are owed a whole lot of money for the foreseeable future. So they're untradeable. True, I can go on, but it's only nine and on nine a.m. and I already want to drink. <laughs> San Jose Sharks are to me, I would have them lower in pessimism myself. Uh, I mean, I would probably have them the lowest. The only thing I would say with the San Jose Sharks, though, is I really do feel that if Kane doesn't come back, the energy of that team's going to change, and they're going to look a lot better. Um, there was one reporter who said that when you went into the San Jose Sharks room and Kane was there, it's like he he was like he sucked the life out of. The, apparently, he's just a miserable dude. So that would be optimism that Kane is no longer there. But there's not much. It's hard to be optimistic in San Jose, for sure. And I'm Ducks. Realistically, I'm only hopeful for Trevor Zegers, uh, Lucas Do- Dostal. Great, looks like he's going to be a good goaltender. Mason McTavish and Jamie Drysdale. Most of the prospects drafted before 2019. I have no expectations. I've seen success in the NHL. They Anaheim is really weird. They drafted safe most of the time and then they started getting some high draft picks and they hit them pretty good so that's good but before that they were just taking safe picks i wouldn't agree that before 2019 they won't make the nhl maybe the ones that haven't made it already but there is that was the most hopeful you could find i don't think so i think for some reason they use that one i don't trust bob murray to put this team in a position to rebuild properly, and I agree. He's waited too long with most of the older. I totally agree with that. Call me a pessimist as well. The the optimistic part is Trevor Zegers. This guy, and and Drysdale, but Trevor Zegers has a way of changing the whole everything in a room. Like The guy will not, doesn't even see losing. He's one of those people that just brings winning to an environment. I really love Trevor Zegers, and I think that over time there is something to look forward to. Again, I think I would be more optimistic with Anaheim than I would with San Jose. Um, Some of those guys he was referring to, I think, if you look at the lineup here, uh, they've got a a lot of guys that, were drafted later, and I think the expectations were a little too high. Uh, Troy Terry, Max Jones, 24th overall. He's really being what a 24, what a player drafted 24th overall is. He's big, he's strong, probably a third liner. There's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Isaac Lundstrom, also probably a third liner, and a really, really, really good one, by the way. I love his two-way play and he's only 21 years old he's got there's there's room for upside offensively for him but I really like his defensive game already so there's a lot of I think there's quite a bit of to look forward to with Anaheim because with their late picks I don't think they did that bad it's just people wanted a lot more because they needed a lot more and it made it look a lot worse for them as that they turned out to be exactly what they were probably projected to be. So 
yeah, I, I don't, I'm not that terribly negative about Anaheim, but I do agree with the pessimistic person who said they waited too long and they kept their veterans a little too long. I, I, I agree with that. So where are we now? We are at Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, the Reaper and Bill and Ted said it's best. I said it best. You might be a king or a little street sweeper, but sooner or later you dance with the Reaper. In other words, Pittsburgh is about to die. And it does seem that way, doesn't it? Uh, it does seem that way. It's hard to be pessimistic, as this optimistic person says, that you still have very good spoiled babies about our teams. We are privileged to watch two of the best players in the world round out their careers. The playoffs are chaos. Get in, anything can happen. Problem is, dude, I don't think it's happening this year. I just don't see it. The injury to Malkin, I think the... I think the, the hue and aura of the team is that they all realize it's time to get some youth in there now. I really do. So I think they miss. I think it's probably best that they miss. They can trade some players, get draft picks, and get this going, man. You can't – keeping on holding on, holding on has hurt too many teams. And uh, it's got to the point where it might already be hurting Pittsburgh. That's what I think about that. Next, Columbus Blue Jackets. Not a playoff team at all, but I'm optimistic about our young players and the direction of the franchise. At least they're supposed to suck this year, says the pessimist. And I agree, and I think they're going to be better than people think. I could show you what's on paper, but it's not really about what's on paper. Um, I think Alexander Tessier has been working his way up. He's not a number one. They don't have a number one center, really with Roslovich. Um, it's a grab bag lineup that's going to have to work together to be really good. I do think Adam Boquist is, uh, was an excellent pickup. And Kekalainen, I think, is a genius and will move this team faster than people probably think right now. Um, but there's something about having a new coach and all that. I think this team is going to be much more competitive than people think. Are they going to make the playoffs? No. But... I think their direction, like they, like this fellow said, is I like the direction because Kekalainen is the one directing it. So pessimistic now, optimistic for the future with the uh, general manager that they have, is what I would say. Uh, Washington Capitals. Look at the pessimism from the Washington Capitals. 54.4% uh, positive, though, but a lot of people are negative on this team, and I'm pretty negative on them, too. Uh, they, I think they have a wide range of plausible outcomes this year. I could see them winning the division, looking like a cup favorite, but I could also see them missing the playoffs entirely. And I agree with that. Um, I'm just not, and the reason why I'm... And the reason why I am uh, pessimistic is their defense. Where are they? Washington Capitals. I just, I'm not a big fan of their D. Orloff Carlson is okay. Carlson's great. His offense makes up for his poor defense. But uh, Van, well, Van Riemsdyk probably won't play there. What's going on? That was Schultz. Is Schultz falling off so bad? If Schultz has fallen off completely, no, Schultz is here. Oh, my gosh, that's right. They they put uh, Kempney down. Wow. Yeah, Van Riemsdyk, Schultz, Fairhavy, and Jensen is just terrible. I'm sorry. That's a terrible defense. I don't have much faith in that goaltending either. They're just going to have to outscore everybody. And uh, you know that just doesn't work. Very often, unless you've got a McDavid, which we'll talk about later. So, uh, I am a Detroit, I am from Detroit, and I've seen what can happen with an aging core. Uh, the Caps remind me a lot of the end of the Zetterberg era. One day I'm going to wake up and the Caps are going to be seventh in the division. Makes sense. That's probably going to happen. And uh, I think they miss this year. 
So I'm on the pessimistic side about the Washington Capitals. Um, I'm actually, no, I don't know if I'm surprised, but I'm a little surprised there's that many fans that realize what's going on there. But because, um, you know, fans are just generally usually very optimistic about their team. Um, Detroit Red Wings uh, will be optimistic and hope, hopeful around 2023. I don't know if it's that far away, 2023, but they're not harboring any delusions about making the playoffs this year. It's all about Steve Eisenman and trusting Eisenman in the process of what they're doing. They have a lot of, they have some very good players coming in this year. And, uh, you know, it's hard to say what could happen with them, but I thought, Oh, I guess they don't have them in now. Joseph Valino should be in this lineup and Lucas Raymond, I heard might make the lineup, but those are two of the young guys that are going to play. Once these guys like Michael Rasmussen and uh, Philippe Sedina could take a big step this year. It's, it's, you just have to have fun watching a young team grow into what possibly could be a dynasty. And that's a positive. At least, you know, it's going a direction that a free building team, is supposed to go, right? That's a good thing. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, 62.2% uh, on the positive side of things here. Uh, Jake Muzzin, Felino, John Tavares injuries were ruinous. Uh, Mitch Marner get it done in the playoffs. Ruinous? Rasmus Sandin comes of age. I agree with that. Sandin will probably... Be get a lot of playing time. I really like him. He looks really good. Uh, finally has a shutdown line. Hopeful meter. More like nope meter Ah. So hard to say. I'm on the fence about the Toronto Maple Leafs, which in itself is probably pessimistic because they're supposed to be way bigger, than, better than they look on paper right now. And uh, I think that they did really good picking up a lot of guys that uh, – uh, whoops, a lot of guys that they did off the scrap heap, Nick Ritchie and and Michael Bunting. Uh, you know, those guys were nice pickups for cheap. If you got to go cheap, I thought they were nice pickups. But I agree. I, I have a difficult time with the depth with this team, forward and defense, especially defense. Injuries to defense, I'll tell you. Jack Campbell's got to knock it out of the park this year. And I think he can, but I'm still not 100% he will. So I, I'm with you, Toronto Maple Leafs fans. Um, although I hear a lot of positive, very positive Toronto Maple Leafs fans. Most of them are fairly realistic into the expectations of their team. Next, Vancouver Canucks. And last big swing for Jim Benning, hoping that it pans out. And if it doesn't, I can't imagine him back next season. So all around optimism for that reason. That is so true. Uh, it is a big swing. Getting Ekman, Larson. Um, Benning pushed in all the cards, hoping to save himself. So we might be better, but we aren't good enough. And that's pretty much what it seems like with Vancouver. Better, but not good enough. Um, the the thing is that can change that is, the, is Elias Pettersson and uh, Besser. Like their top six is pretty sweet. Getting Garland, Dickinson, and Pod Colson, that could be a really good line. I So much people talking about how great Pod Colson is going to be. I'm not sure about his offense. But apparently he's ready to play on a third-line role. Uh, and I, that doesn't actually surprise me. But it's this part here. Pullman, Rathbone, and Shin. We just looked at the Washington. I think that's worse. Hughes, Myers, and Ekman. Okay, good. Not bad. Ty Tyler Myers is not great either. The defense is bad. And Thatcher Demko is going to have to be absolutely enormous to make up for it. 
Um, I still think they likely make the playoffs, but like the post, the guy poster said, they're nowhere near. Uh, number 19, the, or sorry, number 20, the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, Optimus, excited for a full season of Cole Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Caulfield. Everybody is. And, a full, uh, and with, with Suzuki and all of that. Um, possibly Mark Bergevin finally gets fired. <laughs> that is not much positivity, even though he had a 68.4 on positivity. Uh, last season, Stanley Cup run was awesome. Will it happen again this year? I doubt it. Uh, people seem to forget that the Habs barely made the playoffs in the division with no Tampa and Florida. And that's true. And no Weber. Uh, I'm on the pessimistic side of this team. I don't think this team is close. I don't. We can look at the roster, but you just – too much loss. Uh, Kokaniemi, Dvorak will, ha, will make them marginally better than Kokaniemi from last year. But all the losses of Dano and Weber were not properly replaced, appropriately replaced. Uh, very green first line. I think Anderson probably is what he is right now. He's – very poor defensively. It's a very mad team that everything just happened to come together last year. And now Price is in uh, protocol or whatever, so it's not looking good. And they gave up their first Arizona, although it is protected. So there's some positivity there. Next, Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, I'm always hopeful, but they seem more like a bubble team. I think that's fairly fair. They do seem like more like a bubble team. Uh, and I'm a Flyers fan, but it's all about Carter Hart. Carter Hart can change all of that. And uh, that would be your positive. Fingers crossed. That's your positivity. 75% positivity on this team. And that's the best positive thing they could find. Uh, <laughs> they are a professional sports team in Philadelphia. That's about as, that's not even negative. That's like the worst. That's about as far down as you can go. That's like uh, not caring anymore. It's so bad. Uh, but I'm on the pessimistic side, not because of Carter Hart, but I just think the team is a conglomeration of not knowing which direction or sticking to a direction. That's the problem I find with Philadelphia Flyers. Hextall had a plan. They didn't go with that plan. And now it seems like they're almost running out of desperation with guys like uh, Rista Linen, who didn't really play well in Buffalo. Trading Myers for Ellis is okay, but he's 30 years old. And um, it's just a mishmash of players. And it, it almost looks like a team that's going to be in the middle, like we've talked a lot, barely make the playoffs or make the playoffs. Get a middle round draft pick. Repeat. Hate to say it, but that's what it looks like. Um, Boston Bruins. 75.7. Look at the realism in Boston Bruins here. 18th spot. Um, they're they're going to be competitive. It, the, 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 it seems like their make the playoffs and win a round is more realistic than expecting a cup run. Um, losing Tuka Rask and Krejci is a huge blow. I don't necessarily agree with the Rask situation, but Krejci was. I don't have much faith in the current plan to platoon the second line. I agree. Coyle's never done it before. And now all of a sudden he's going to do it. Uh, the goaltending should be fine unless it isn't. Plus, Bergeron Marchand will have to slow down eventually. I don't think this is the year that's going to happen. I think they're fine. I think it's okay. And they're slowly – they're trying to transition and keep the core, which is a very difficult thing to do. Optimistic for this year, I think they could still do really well. They could still grab another center. And uh, I don't think Tuka Rass is going to hurt that bad. I really am a big Allmark fan. And I think Swayman is absolutely fantastic. So – uh, Ottawa Senators, optimistic. They, I fully expect them to draft in the top 10. I'm okay with that. Yeah, and I think Ottawa, for the most part, is like that. 
I think they'll be competitive in most nights. Yeah, it's a rebuilding team. They work hard, but got to sign Brady, man. Got to sign Brady. I become pessimistic if they don't, if they got to trade Brady away. Because as far as I'm concerned, people like Brady Kachuk are what cups are all about. And if you can't keep them, I think you're in trouble. And then Eugene Melnick owns my team. I'm curious what's this optimistic optimism thing you talk about. Fair, fair enough. I don't know if it's Melnick's fault necessarily that he has to run on a budget, but he does own the team. What if he didn't own the team? Is anybody going to buy the team? Probably would, actually. But uh, it's a tough market, and he's doing, I think, maybe the best. I don't know. He's done some really strange stuff and said some really strange things. I'm trying to be positive for you, but <laughs> next. Uh, Seattle Kraken. We're guaranteed to win way more games than last season. Yeah, because they haven't did anything. There's optimism in Seattle because nothing's happened. So it's like, yeah, I can't wait. Stuff like that. Uh, Vegas benefited from a lot of errors from other GMs. I think they benefited from hog tying a lot of GMs into areas that they didn't want to go. Um, Seattle was unable to take advantage of this, of this time around. Vegas also had a lot of luck. With extremely good scouting. I'm not sure what they got, where they had the extremely good scouting. Oh, just from the players that they picked. Said this that Seattle is unlikely to repeat. I don't think Seattle is trying to repeat what Vegas did. Um, and I don't think they should. Vegas probably wasn't going to win a cup that way. They came really close, I suppose. But the fallout could be absolutely devastating. And, uh, I think they're going to probably be close to a playoff spot because of their division. But come trade deadline, they're going to trade away some of these veterans for picks. Grab their picks, draft as well, hopefully, and then yeah, add some more free agents and repeat until they're good. That's what I think is going to happen. We'll see if I'm right. Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, I know it'll be better than the last three years of dog shit hockey, but how much is really the question? I think I'll just be happy to watch games knowing we have a chance again. That's 83.2% positive. I think they're just more positive than last year, I suppose. I think the, I think the Chicago Blackhawks are going to be better than people think. Um, flurry being a big reason for it, but um, I also, they have a high power offense and, um, of course, Jones going there, I think, is going to help their offense. I, everything is offense, offense, offense. And then a really strong goaltender in the background, in the back there, that can stop pucks like crazy. I think they could, they'll be right on the bubble this year. Pet, uh, this next one is just unfortunate. Uh, the whole situation going on with the sex scandal and all that. I won't go too far into it, but it's certainly can put some pessimism in people for sure. We don't know what happened there, but the thought of it can only bring pessimism. I have to agree. And I'm going to do the last one, and then I'll do my next video. I'll do the top 13 New York Rangers. New York Rangers, Young Guns. Let me see how long this has been so far. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'll go the whole way. New York Rangers, uh, young guns will get meaningful time and some time to get their feet wet. We finally got some grit. Yeah, I, I agree with that. They, I, I don't mind the grit that they got. I do think they needed the grit. Um, we're going to look at the pessimistic one here where it says, I mean, y'all saw the Knicks went through when James Dol Dolan got involved. They're harder to fight against and easier to play against. Chris Drury has hurt whatever feelings I have left. I sorry, dude. I totally disagree. Um, I'm I, I do follow a lot of analytics, and I think a lot of that this comes from the animal analytics group because, and I'm not sure about the Brian Reeves trade. He doesn't. I don't know if he can really do much on the ice anymore. But I did agree with Barkley Goudreau. Uh, three and a half million. I don't think is that bad. He put up twenty points in a. 
and in a, on a team that played him pretty low in the lineup a lot. He's a big guy. He's strong. He plays both ways. He brings what teams need to in hockey. I'm sorry. You can try to uh, butter it up or, or analytic it up all you want. It's been proven over and over again, and Tampa proved it. They gave up a first for Barkley Goudreau. Changed the whole atmosphere of that team. Same as Maroon, same as Coleman. And the New York Rangers went and said, you know what, we're going to learn early before we go into a cup run and lose to Columbus Blue Jackets, where they basically beat us around the boards. And we're going to get the guys now. And I think it was a good move. I think it was a, I think it was a good move. And including Samuel Blay. I know Buchnevich was hard to was hard to move on from, but you're gonna have to pay Kako, you're gonna have to play pay Lafreniere. And the money that Buchnevich went, if you look at the future of the cap here, it's just not gonna work. It just wasn't gonna work. So they picked up a pick, they brought in Samuel Blay, which I trust trust me, you're gonna love this guy. Whenever he's on the ice, you're going to love this guy. Um, and he brings that energy and need to a team and gritty, wears down the opposition. All of those things are important, I do believe. So, yeah, I'm positive, obviously. I'm big positive. I actually have them second in the East, or second in the Metro, I should say. Uh, next, St. Louis Blues. Optimism at 84.3 for the St. Louis Blues. Let me tell you, I'm on the not on the optimist side for St. Louis. Um, the moves uh, Doug Armstrong made in the offseason have been great. Our offense looks mean, mean on paper. I, I don't know where they're getting that from. We haven't taken out anything vital and have only seemed to improve. The defense still seems shaky. I think it's very shaky. And that's really the my main negativity, but it's not my only one. Um, and this is... Same old blues. I am 55 and have been a fan since inception. I had my SC victory and fate will never grant me that feeling again. Death will come before they win it again. Ouch. Um, St. Louis Blues. I'll tell you what I don't like. Uh, yeah, I don't like Scandella, Mikolo, and Bartuzo in your top six. I don't mind Scandella in your five six. I don't think he should be in your top four. Pareko, I'm really worried about with the injuries and everything, what he's going to be now. He He's looked like a shadow of what they thought they, he would be, and uh, it's too bad. Forwards, it's just a grab bag of forwards. That's what I, I – it never seems to work out well when you just grab a whole bunch of forwards and put them together. But uh, Jordan Kyrou hasn't really become what I, what I ever expected him to become at 23. I thought he'd be way better than this by now. I think a lot of people did. In actuality, he probably is right at projection. A 35, a, a 35 overall pick that gets 40 to 50 points is not bad. I think most people would be happy with that. Problem is, it's not good enough for the, what the Blues need. And uh, same as Robert Thomas. Manny had a horrible year last year. He just seems to be regressing more than he's He's progressing, and that's a hard thing. And uh, getting Buknevich, as we just talked about with the Rangers, I don't. Just, all of these pieces don't seem to fit to me. Same as Brandon Saad. It's like, a, okay, we'll th we'll grab him because we can, and we'll throw him in and see what happens. And if it doesn't happen, we can still trade Saad and Buknevich for picks and do the rebuild that probably it's heading towards here in St. Louis. So. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Next, Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, no more goalie con controversy. I don't, that, you don't have flurry. That's a bad thing, not a good thing. I don't care how you put it. <laughs> Better forward depth, I don't see it. Uh, and getting to beat up on the on the rest of the Pacific. We sh Getting to beat up on the rest of the Pacific, that's the positive part. Pacific is a poor division, and Vegas should make the playoffs easy, even with that. Um, I have a problem with what might happen if he gets injured. That's true. If Laner gets injured, they don't have much of anything after that. Uh, a series that 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 is really they have very little goaltending depth. They're going to ask a lot from Laner this year. 
Um, and I don't, he said better forward depth. I don't think it's any better. I think it's about the same. Could be worse if Evgeny Dadunov plays like he did last year. Uh, Nolan Patrick, same thing. Like Maybe better, but probably not much better. They still don't have the number one center that they need. I get, I just get this feeling that there's going to be a regression here, but they make the playoffs and then they're out in the first or second round. So that would be, I guess, pessimistic for me. Next, we are eleventh, and uh, I think I'm going to end it here. We'll do the, I'll do the top ten in my next one. Nah, forget it. I'll go all the way. Why not? Uh, when the stars are healthy, we all know. I Yeah, when the stars are healthy, they're awesome. If they get injured, it's going to be trouble. The core is aging. For the long-term, attempt to restock on the fly is probably not going to work unless we start hitting on our first-round picks, which Dallas has done, actually. They've hit very well on their late picks. And uh, that is – their drafting has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, getting um, look at Lindell was in seventy four overall. Uh, Klingberg was a late one. Uh, they got guys coming up right now that look really good, like t- like uh, Riley Tuft and uh, Thomas Harley. Watch out for him. Um, this team to me is. Excellent right now. I think there's a lot, a lot to look forward to, and I think that they might be able to draft their way out of the box that that guy is saying. I think they're that good. Uh, Los Angeles Kings. Um, they're in a weaker division, yes, and I think that they, they, on the, they have a bunch of players that are under, a, are on the brink of turning a major corner. Um, I agree. There's, it's all depends on if those kids are ready this year. Apparently, they're on the fence right now. Kupari and Kaliev and uh, Byfield got injured, which is tough, are right on the fence right now. But I think this team has enough depth to make the playoffs and maybe even go pretty, even fairly high if everything hits right. Um, they have a deep pool of prospects. They have a lot of ways to improve. And but this fellow doesn't think that they're ready yet. I think they're ready to make the playoffs. I don't think they're ready to go for a cup yet, but I do think they're ready to make the playoffs. Um, this fe- um, ninety percent positive with Minnesota Wild. Wow, that's a lot of positive. But I think a lot of that has to do with what Bill Guerin is doing. He's making bold moves, whether you might agree with them or not. The buyouts, but. Um, I think they had to be done. I think they had to give room for the young players that they had. And it just was getting stale keeping those old guys there all the way it was. It was a tough decision, but I agree. I, I think it was a good decision. I think Garen is making a lot of very good decisions. Can't go against it. I like the way they've drafted since he's come in. So I think there's, I'm on the positive side for Minnesota Wild, optimist side. Um, I understand the pessimism here, though. Uh, the cap space is going to be a problem. And they're probably, because of that, not going to be a legitimate contender for four to five years. But in they could do pretty well in that time, still with the roster that they have, Capri's off and everybody. They could catch lightning in the bottle, probably still make the playoffs. But when they do get there and they have the room, this team could be absolutely unbelievable. So I think there's a lot more room for optimism than pessimism for sure. New Jersey Devils. Fitchy has yet to move, make a move that made me question the direction he is taking the team. Totally agree with that. I don't think he's made one mistake so far, Fitzgerald. So um, I tons of positivity here. I think they might make the playoffs this year. Um I don't have it. They've won off seasons before. I don't care about the off season. I don't even watch preseason. Put in, I don't put any stock into it at all. I know what I saw in regular season, and I just go by probable projection. This team could be very, very good. Getting Bernier was awesome. Getting Graves was awesome. Hamilton. Um, I think this team could just take off this year. 
So yeah, I'm heavily positive. Uh, Edmonton Oilers, I am surprised that this is this high. But I think any team that has McDavid and Dreisaitl, as this so this uh, this uh, optimist says, and they finally got some line mates to work with. I agree. The offense on this team is going to get them to the playoffs. There's no doubt about it. And the pessimist says this team will go as far as Connor and Drysett. I'll drag them. Um, I don't like their defense. I don't. Uh, straight up, not fan of their defense. But we'll see what happens. I want, the only thing I will say about their defense is if they just say, screw it, we're just going to go pure offense and try to outscore our opposition like 5-3, 5-2, they probably will get away with that. Is that going to work in the, is that gonna work in the uh, playoffs? Does it usually? You tell me. So that would be my pessimism. Optimism, team will make the playoffs for sure. Um. I live in Edmonton, by the way. So, Carolina Hurricanes, uh, 94.5 positive, and it should be. A uh, lot of changes. I think the changes are good, except for they had Bernier in their grasp and they let him go. I don't know. We'll see about Anderson. If he stays healthy, they're fine. If Ranta stays healthy, they're golden. Um, he, he thinks that uh, the pessimist says that they're weaker on paper than they were last year. Hamilton had to go at $9 million. It just had to. It's, a, it's not just a cap issue. It's a weak market issue in Carolina. They, they, they just couldn't do it. And I actually think that it could turn out all right because I thought the move to get D'Angelo was fantastic. He could make up that offense. Um, Ethan Bear coming back for Fogel. You'll be surprised about Ethan Bear. He's a solid dude, man. Solid shutdown guy to play. Um, I don't know. We'll see what Fogel does. I think it was a fair trade. Uh, the big thing here is if Anderson and Ranta cannot be injured, then they're golden. If they are injured, it could be trouble. Getting Kisberry Cook in the Army was beautiful. Sign him up. The overall offense on the overall forward depth is absolutely fantastic. Um, so there's a lot to be positive about. I'm huge optimist for that team. Colorado Avalanche, what's not to like? Uh, the only problem is if Kemper gets hurt, and he often does. Uh, they do have some depth forward depth depth issues, but they have the best defense in the league. So you can find forward depth at the trade deadline or throughout the season, but having the defensemen that they have, there's it's, it's just a sick sick uh, oh wait, what am I doing? It's just a super sick depth, man. On D. Simple as that. Uh, they got Barron up there right now because uh, who's injured? Taze? Taze is injured. But Taze, McCarr, Gerard, Johnson, Bowen Byram, and Ryan Murray. Are you freaking kidding me? Best defense in the league. Yes, I'm high on them. Super high. Kemper doesn't get injured. This team is going to absolutely blow everybody out of the water. Uh, Winnipeg Jets. Look at the high. Winnipeg Jets just love, 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 love their team. Everybody loves their team, but they're sometimes overly positive about them. 98.6. Um, but there's a lot to be positive about. They picked up, uh, they finally got some defense. One that I'm a little suspect on uh, in uh, Nate Schmidt. But I think Paul Maurice gets a lot out of their defensemen. Uh, Brendan Dillon really played well last year. Um, I think he was a good pickup. Big, solid dude to play in their 4-5 spot. Defense is better. No doubt about it. Stanley and DeMello in their 5-6. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the big issue for me is Luke Dubois. He's really got to come out here. But overall, their offense is still great. Losing Appleton hurts more than people realize. I don't know what Veselainen is going to be. So far, seeing him, he looks more like a fourth than a third liner. And a team that used to be really deep, I got to see a little more. Like Tor Toninato 
and Riley Nash is meh. It's not as good as it was before, but I'm still fairly positive about what that team can do. Uh, the big thing with them, what I found funny about what they said was, I feel the important part of being a Winnipeg fan is accepting that your favorite team will never win a Stanley Cup. Why not? What the heck is that? There's no reason why Winnipeg can't win a cup. They're, they're, they're spending to the cap right now. I don't get that. I don't, I don't see why. Maybe they're just very humble people, I guess. <laughs> My expectation is the team that will finish five, fifth, in the, fifth and 11th in the conference. Hard to find optimi- Hard to be optimistic for an average team and hard to be pessimistic for a team that shows some greatness. Yeah, sort of pretty wishy-washy comments there. New York Islanders, uh, there's no reason to not have optimism right now. Their future could be difficult, but they're not that old, actually. They're more like late 20s, early 30s. They got a lot of years yet. And uh, they have a pretty good guy at the helm there in Lamorello that, uh, that will do well. Look at this. I'm worried that great coaching has helped this team overachieve for three seasons. You're worried about that, are you? That's what you found something to worry about. And now it just seems ridiculous to be optimistic. He's just been let down because he wanted them to win the cup. He's just doing one of those. I'm going to think poorly so it won't hurt as bad if they don't win the cup. I think that's all they're doing. Um, Tampa Bay Lightning fans, I've talked to them a lot They have nothing but positive say. There's really nothing to say that's not positive. They may not be as good as the team as they were last year on paper, but they're still pretty darn good, and they could still win a third cup. There's nothing to be not positive about about the Tampa Bay Lightning. They have a great general manager in Breeze Blah. Their drafting is fantastic. It's just sick. You know, it is. I'm I'm a little jealous, I have to admit. Um, And 100% for Florida Panthers. There was only 75 votes. Come on, Florida fans. What are you doing? There's got to be more of you out there than that. Uh, But there's nothing to – it's going in the right direction. After not having a playoff team for so long, to see this roster with Reinhardt and uh, Huberto and um, now you got Tippett coming up, Barkoff just got a huge contract that he deserves and is actually an underpay. Um, This contract – this. Team is looking sweet. Quinville as the coach, it's absolutely fantastic. Nothing but positivity there. I agree, 100% optimism for the Florida Panthers. That's my full 42. I hope you enjoyed this fine frolic. That was a long, long video, but I think you're going to enjoy it. Have a great day, everybody. Come see my live. Hit the sub button, and I'll send you a Mine and Shell Pearls of Wisdom necklace right to your door. Pearlocopter. Okay, bye.